Do you know the FAIR principles for scientific data management? Findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability are key to enhance the discoverability and sharing of data. Genomic and phenotypic data are personal data that allow you to know the genetic characteristics of a person, as well as unique information about their physiological qualities or health. Data sharing and reuse are vital for advancing clinical and genomics research. In recent years, governments worldwide have enacted data privacy protection laws and regulations to protect the rights of their citizens, restricting how personal data is shared. In this context, services for securely archiving and sharing sensitive human data for research are more necessary than ever. At the European Genome Phenome Archive, we archive all types of potentially identifiable genetic, phenotypic, and clinical data resulting from biomedical research projects. Our aim is to advance biomedical research and promote personalized medicine worldwide by enabling discovery of and access to human genomic and health research data. Welcome to the EGA Submitter Portal, an interface to facilitate the metadata submission of human data. Before we start, it is important to make the distinction between data and metadata objects. We understand data as the files that we permanently archive at the EGA, whilst metadata is the information about the data itself. The EGA has its own metadata schema and standards. We can divide them into groups. The project description answers questions such as what is the project about or how many samples does it contain, among others. The data control provides information about the terms and conditions to use the data and who are the data controllers. The metadata from each group is registered in two different portals. The first metadata is registered in the submitter portal, whilst the second group is registered in the DAG portal. In this tutorial, we will focus on the first group. Welcome to the new submitter portal, which is soon to be released. We will walk together through a metadata submission for sequencing data and learn some tips to improve the user experience during the process. First, we need to log in. For that, use the username and password, which has to be previously registered. This is the Submitter Portal webpage. In here, we have the submissions we are working on, referred as open submissions. We can also check the drop-down menu with three main sections. The first part is related to the submissions. We can create a new one or check all our submissions. Then we have the metadata objects. We can decide which one we want to go, from studies to files. And we also have the DAC portal. In this portal, we must register a data access committee to manage the data access requests and the policies with the terms and conditions for data usage. In this button, we'll find a guided tour on how to use the submitter portal. We can open and close it anytime. So now we can start with a new submission. Let's click on this button. We need to add a title and a description. We can add a collaborator by clicking here. We don't need to add them now. We can add collaborators anytime. Now we click Create and here is our submission. Keep in mind this information will only be visible for us and our collaborators. All the metadata objects are in the breadcrumb menu, starting with the study. The study contains information about the project. Currently, we don't have any object, so let's create one. We need to add the title of our study as well as a description. We should write a summary of the purpose of our project and select the study type. To know which are the mandatory fields, we need to look for a red star next to them. If we want to link our study to a publication, we have to add the PubMed ID. As we type, it will suggest publications, so we just need to find ours. As a new feature, we can add our study to an external repository. For that, select a data source, add the URL, the ID, and click here to add it. When we have our information ready, click Add and here's a study. The next step is to create samples.
There are no objects, so let's create one. For this tutorial, we want to register 50 samples in total. We will start with one manually. We have to add the mandatory information. What we are expecting is some description of the samples extracted during the project that were sequenced. The biological sex, the subject ID. Please remember that this has to be anonymized. In our case, we are going to specify case or control and the organism part. Ok, as we want to register 50 samples, there are 49 left and we don't want to do this manually, so we are going to select Batch Upload. For that, you can download here an empty template. Ours is ready, so we can upload it. Here we have our 50 samples registered. In this table, we can customize the columns that we want to see. Let's move on to experiments. In this section, we are going to register information about the experiments used to sequence the samples. First, you need to select the study and then add the information. Once we have added all the information, we can create the experiment object. Next step is to register runs and analysis, which are linking objects between samples and files. The first one, we will register it manually. For that, we need to select the format. In this case, it's paired fast queues. Then it appears a field to add the files. We need to select the samples using the sample alias. Then we select the experiment registered in the preview step and start linking the files. The available files will show as we type. When you see the file, select it. Now let's look for the second one, as these are paired fast queues. Click this button to register our first run. We have 49 left to register. For that, we will use the template as we did with samples. Again, you can download an empty template here. We will upload our information with the link between samples and files in a CSV. We select the format and the experiment and click Upload. Now we have 50 runs registered in total. Let's move to analysis. The registration of an analysis is similar to runs. This object also links samples and files, but instead of using raw data, it's for processed data, such as VCFs. In this case, we will register a sequence variation analysis object. First, we will link it to the study from this submission, select the file, and we will also use the experiment. The file contains information from all samples, so we will select all of them. Just for you to know, you can also reuse samples by clicking here and add the sample EGA IDs. Now we will add the information of the analysis. You have to add a title, a description and select the type. In this case, it is a sequence variation. As the linkage to an experiment is not mandatory, depending on the analysis type, new fields will appear requiring minimal information about the experiment. For example, experiment type, the platform, the reference genome used, and the chromosomes present in the file. We click Add, and now we have registered our first analysis. However, we also have clinical data, and we're going to register another analysis for it. This time, the type will be sample phenotype. 
So we are going to select our file with clinical data and the study. Again, we could use the experiment, but in this case, we don't need that, so we will remove it. We will select all samples and add some information in the title and description. For the type, we will use sample phenotype. In this case, the experiment fields don't appear as we don't need further information about the experiment. Let's create our second analysis. The last step is to create a dataset that will gather all the information that we have registered so far. As there is no object, let's create one. In here, we need a title and a description explaining the data within the dataset. We'll also need to link these objects to a policy. For the policy, you need to register them in the DAC portal. To link the policy, you only need to write either the policy title or ID. As we type, it will list the possible options. We select all runs and analyses that we want to add to this dataset and the dataset type. Remember, you can select multiple options. In our submission, we have put all the information in one dataset, but if you want to register one dataset for each file type, it is possible to create as many as needed. Once we have our dataset completed and registered, we can click on Finalize. Here is a summary of every object that we have registered. For example, we can see that we have one study, 50 samples, one experiment, 50 runs, two analyses, and one dataset. Also, we have the information of the files. In this case, we can see that our submission contains 102. If we are happy with our information in the summary, it is time to select an expected date release to the website. Only after revising the file extension, we can check the box. When we think everything is ready, we will click the Finalize button. Don't forget that once we send this submission to Helpdesk, we cannot modify the information. Congratulations, our submission is completed! We can check if our submission has been approved by Helpdesk by going to Submissions. We will see that it is in a blue box, meaning that it's closed. In here, we can see again a summary. For example, if we enter in Studies, we can check that it is closed. This is the accession of our study, a persistent identifier that the EGA will use to identify it. So now our study and dataset are released in the EGA website. Let's check them out. For that, we can look for the study accession in the Browse section. In the study, we have the accession. We can also check the title, description, and the study type. Remember, we had an external link to Eurobio Imaging. Here it is. For the dataset, we can also check the website with information and the files linked to it.